Hello, everybody. It is conference championship weekend, and what better place to be than right here with your broskies on one and done. Now let's get this bread. Recording live from somewhere. This is one and done. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Train. Welcome to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball information. And we are powered by the world's greatest, no, the universe's greatest website. That is drrodo.com. I am your humble host. My name is Jay Heinrich. I happen to be the conductor of the aforementioned green screens media train. Find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. If you hit that follow button, I will hit that follow back button. That's what I do. That is what I do. And you know what this guy next to me does because you're here to see him. He is the captain of the green screens media ship, El Capitan himself. You can find him on X at MC Holland 34, the OG Money Mike, Mr. Mike Holland. Mike, what it do, baby? Oh, man, I can't believe there's only one more day tomorrow of the college basketball, uh, I won't say regular season, but this is it. Like, after after tomorrow, we're going to have an entire bracket, um, so a lot more content going to come your way. I'm excited about today's slate. Um, you know, some, some interesting games on the slate overall, it's been a fantastic week in, in the DFS circles, I uh, had a pretty good night on prize picks last night as well. Could have been a major night, but we couldn't get a second Bryce Williams assist. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited for, uh, for the next couple of weeks. This is, uh, this is what we do this for. And, uh, man, let's see if we can't get some more commas. This truly is, uh, you know, the build up to this weekend and then, the tournament, the big tournament, you know, this is, we're in the, we're in the home stretch, as they say, Mike, doing it with everybody watching in the green screens media universe. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons, turn on those notification bells so you don't miss anything that we're dropping. Oh, by the way, why not hop in the one and done invitational for today as well on DraftKings? Little $3 entry, 30 max players, $3 per cat in there. So make sure you get to the link that is in the live chat. We'll be in the live chat there, dropping it in there very quickly. The production team will, I know, because they're always on top. Boom, right on cue. Right so there. fast. So fast. Get in that DraftKings competition with all of us and make sure you have some fun. Let us know what you're planning on doing today with your lineups as we give you a little bit of insight as to what we think we'll be doing with ours, eight game slate today. All these are Ken Palm's lines and metrics that we discuss on this show. On this uh, slate today, we've got the fifteen dollar five k to first. That would be okay. I would probably be <laughs> all right with with five k. Just, That's just nice. saying, yeah, that would be all right. And then the final thirty dollar qualifier for the king of the bracket. This is seat sixty three. Mike, yes, sixty three. We are almost done there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Goodbye, bankroll. The, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, my bankroll. Goodbye, my friend. Uh, man, this chat, up. Jay, is fired up too, man. Yeah, are we on the, are we, uh, is it on fire? Right? I should have known. Oh, my goodness. And a kid. Yo, <laughs> what up, Andy? Yo. Good to see you in there as always. Mama Rocks, good morning to you too. Heard you fell asleep early last night. So we're glad <laughs> we could go live before lock for you to be able to hang out with us there. Forklift Jeremy, always good to see you. Forklift Jeremy hopping in the chat there with the fire emojis. I think, what do we got? The goat, the footprints, the basketball, the goats following basketball. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking hey, too deep into that. I love it. <laughs> I, I love all the emojis in the in the live chat anyway. And then Mama Rock saying, I wish Purdue wasn't on the slate though. Yeah, Edie is on this slate, Mama Rocks. We're gonna get into that right now. Let's go ahead and uh Let's go ahead and get into this. Let's start with Edie, actually, here. He's on the slate, but the value is – it's next to none, Mike. It's, it's basically the go. same as yesterday. Yeah, it, yeah, it's the same as yesterday. Uh, 
same same bad movie, same bad channel where ED is twenty percent owned and there's zero value. So like it makes me feel like the mid tier is gonna be really popular again. We can we're gonna try to find some value to be able to get different, but uh, there's really only one big total in this game, but there's a, a lot of solid uh, games overall. Um, just the one total above 155 that Nebraska Illinois games at 158. A couple of mid majors on the slate. Well, maybe we can try to take advantage of some people not paying attention uh, if they haven't followed all year like we've been doing. We cover these these cats year round, so maybe there's some things that we could figure out here to help you get to the old. Top of <laughs> that leaderboard. Oh, Carolina basketball, <laughs> Jeremy. Yeah, yes, the Tar Heels. The Tar Heels. Appreciate the clarification there. Always good to see. And we got a lot of Carolina cats that yeah, get hop in our live chat. You know? <laughs> it's good, though. It's good. We love it. We love it from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's get to the core four. We're, we, we like to give these out at the beginning and the end of the show, especially when we're live before lock. We know you're busy. We know you've got stuff to do, and we appreciate you hanging out with us on a Saturday morning. So, uh, Mike, do you want to get – taking a little bit of a different approach here uh, to, the, to the core fours because we usually give out two cores. We usually give out the cash and maybe attorney. But now we're looking at it from a, a little bit different perspective, Mike. Yeah, so – you know, instead of a, a cash, because you can, I mean, God, there's so many, <laughs> so many different tournaments going on. Um, so we decided to switch it up a little bit. You know, it's always nice to switch things up. We got a mid tier build and a stars and scrubs build. Um, so for this mid tier build, we're we're like we're not looking at anybody under 5,500 on this one. So this one, we're trying to stay in those mid 5K guys as our value, trying to you know kind of get up to maybe that 8K threshold. Um, and in our stars and scrubs, we're just uh, we're taking a shot on some guys under 5,500 and uh, trying to get up to the top for Zach Eady. So in our mid-tier builds, um, it starts with uh, starts with going to this A&M uh, game, uh, A&M Florida side. So uh, on the Aggie side, you have Manny Obaseki. He's 5,500. Uh, this is a, a pace up spot for the Aggies. He's going to shoot a ton of threes. Been playing very well recently. Now that he's starting, so at 5,500, he feels like the most comfortable mid-tier. Uh, low mid tier play that we want to get to. AJ Store, really any of these guys that are 6K. AJ Store, if Chucky Hepburn's going to do what he did uh, yesterday, which is only be available in case of an emergency, then we saw Stephen Crawl and AJ Store essentially take every shot. Um, AJ Store going to obviously have a tough matchup against Purdue. So you can look to some of these other guys uh, in the 6K range. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if he's going to play 35 minutes and take 20 shots, I'm definitely interested in A.J. Store again. Uh, Case Brown Pryor from USF, he's 7,400. Uh, definitely like his upside and his matchup there. And then Wade Taylor, another Aggie here at 7,700. Uh, absolutely fire yesterday. Uh, pretty easy prop with the, uh, the over 19 and, or 18 and a half points that he was on prize picks. I think he went for 28 real life points in that one. So, uh, he's at 7,700, another guy that we're going to try to attack Florida with. So that'll leave you with 5,850 for kind of that mid-tier build. So you're kind of leaning into maybe one more guy uh, just in that maybe mid-5K range and then try to get a couple more guys in that 6K range for sure. Uh, for Stars and Scrubs builds, we're going to be looking at that different approach where we got to get all the way up to the top to Zach Eady. Like, he's been going bonkers. If you can find – just one guy that's able to get the four X that's, you know, sub, uh, you know, sub 5,200 or so. Um, that's really going to make this thing pop off. So two guys we're going to look at, we're going to look at Jake D. Michelle, uh, the guard from Duquesne. He's 4,900 uh, playing 30 minutes now. Uh, so we're going to take a shot and fire off at him. Ty Rogers, who's just touched 30 minutes again uh, for the first time in a, quite a while uh, from Illinois, he is 5,200, also guard forward eligible, so you can kind of move some things around in your roster. So those are two cheap guys around 5K each. I look at you all the way up to Zach Eady at 10-7. Uh, John L. Davis as well at 8,300 in a nice smash spot uh, for Florida Atlantic against a very poor defensive Temple squad. Uh, it's only going to leave you a 52-25 left, so you may have to dive even. That just shows you how tough it is. To, uh, to dive deeper, you could probably take away John L. Davis um, and then live in that mid-6K you know, mid range or that low-6K range, 
but to get Zach Eady, like it's it's tough. We're gonna need some maybe late news to try and get uh, to try and get to Zach Eady um, and feel comfortable about it. He might he might be even lower owned today than he was. Might yesterday. be man. Like it's, it's just gonna be just so disgusting. Hard. It's gonna be so hard to get to him. Fifty two twenty five left, like Mike said. And again, these core fours are just some pillars to start yeah. throwing into your lineup. Do you use all four of them if you can get to? Yeah, maybe if that's your build that you're rolling with, but you know, just try to start your lineups with these cats and then work around there. And uh, yeah, shoot up to the top of that leaderboard, all commas, no comas. That's what we like to say around here for sure. Brock Erickson hopping back in. It has been a minute, Brock, and it's good to see you back in the live chat. It is tough to pay up today. Cheapest guy on the <laughs> first look was Manny. Yeah. Hey, that was like, hey, right? That's oh. I get it, Brock. Yeah. We're going to have to figure it out. And that's why we're it's nice to be going so early now, so we got plenty of time before this. It's a one o'clock Eastern again. And normally, we are, we expect that noon Eastern tip. We get that extra hour today to work on the builds. It doesn't tip until one o'clock Eastern, so we're gonna need it to dig around in there and uh, and find uh, that value. Anthony nope. Taylor. Yeah, Anthony Taylor jumping in here saying, "Let's get some Fanduel love. We'll, uh, we'll try to get you a little bit of love at the uh, the end of the show. Most of our." I mean, all shows are based off of DraftKings, um, but we'll yeah. try to get you some love if you stick around, um, let you know what some good uh, fan tool plays are. But I'm I'm with you, Jay. Like, I jammed in ED yesterday. He went off. But, like, my low – I mean, it was Nahima Lean who didn't do anything. It was uh, – jeez, I just – I was just trying to jam in some guys. And so where I normally go 50-50, I may want to – I may, as he says, fan has CBB, LOL. Yeah, it's why we don't cover too much fan They don't have as many tournaments on there. But uh, we'll try to get some plays in there for sure. Um, so, yeah, man, like you play them and it's like you may need to only stick to maybe two of those guys that we just talked about and then try to go mid-tier from there. I think that's the only way you can get ED in this time is uh, two low-tier play. Two, I wouldn't even say low-tier. I mean, gave you a 4,900 and a 5,200 guy. <laughs> um, so, uh, Mama Roxanne can fade ED. I think some of the 7 8K guys really go off. Yeah, I mean, even playing seven to eight K guys, you see in our in our mid tier build, you're still going to need to take some shots on uh, guys like Obaseki, AJ Store. Obaseki is going to be so popular today, which is yeah. absolutely terrifying. <laughs> right when you look at that, and he's going to it's going to be a big number next to that percentage sign. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, is, it, is it a free spin? <laughs> right, it you should know. be against Florida, but geez, man. Yeah, the game went yeah. under last time by a lot. I don't like that. At, Oh, Brock's saying that the new pricing structure makes mid-tier build so strong. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely a, a way to approach that. And uh, Ant, Ant the kid in there shouting out NC State. We've got the, <laughs> the Tar Heels. We've Finally. Got NC State in there. We've got, let's do it. Let's keep the live chat rolling. Love to see everybody in there this morning. And one more thing before we get to this eight. We're breaking down all eight games for you on this live before lock edition of One and Done. One more thing before we get there. One and done this year. We are doing a bracket challenge. So, you know, we're not – you're going to see us, like, for the next five or six days straight on these on these YouTube and Twitter streets anyway, going live for y'all, We're d- recapping the bracket, breaking down each side, giving you the, giving you the Thursday slate plays. We're going to be here the entire time leading up to Thursday uh, when the big tournament starts. And we want to make sure that you're hanging out with us too. So – we are going to do a bracket challenge, and the winner, Mike, the winner is going to receive a signed Caleb Love jersey. What? That is correct. A signed Dang. Caleb Love jersey, even though he just crushed my hopes and dreams the other night when we had – I'm just uh, – it's all flames in my lineup and Caleb Love. That's okay, though. We're giving away that <laughs> Caleb Love jersey. So what you've got to do – is you've got to fill out the form at the link that we're dropping in there and make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Got to do that. Got to be both in order to qualify to win the Caleb Love jersey. There's the link. Just drop it in the chat right there. Got to add your email address, and we will add you to the old bracket challenge when we get it all set up, send you that invite to it. So make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you fill out that form so you too can show us what you got to win that Caleb Love autographed jersey. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us this morning. 
Let's hop into this rundown, Mike. Eight games covering all eight of them, like I said. And we're going to start with St. Joe's and VCU, a 141-point implied total here and only a one-point spread. So, um, yeah, we've got to get to uh, – this is going to be a close one, I should say. Only one-point spread. So, all these metrics that we're hitting again are uh, Ken Palm metrics and the – Everything that we're doing now in terms of offensive and defensive efficiency, these will all be within the conference since we're in the conference tournament uh, uh, here. Uh, so let's get to it. St. Joe's fourth in offensive efficiency in the conference, 11th in defensive efficiency, VCU, seventh offensive and fifth defensive. Big time pace up here for VCU as they were 297th in the country in tempo. The only time these two teams played one, uh, VCU won 73 to 69. Reynolds and, and Brown both had 21 for St. Joe's. And then Shulga had 12, 6, and 5 for VCU. But let's start with St. Joe's first, Mike. Four guys playing 30 plus minutes. Yeah. Um, so the St. Joe's side, maybe not as appealing as the VCU side, at least first look. I mean, Eric Reynolds is there. Um, at 8K, and, I mean, he's not going to have any ownership, which is somewhat intriguing. You know, this isn't the VCU, um, you know, <laughs> the the Shaka Smart days, um, defensively fifth in the in the A-10. So not to – I don't know that I really want to get to Eric Reynolds at 8K because there's so many other guys like John L. Davis around that 8K mark. you got the Illinois guys around the 8K mark. You've got the Texas A&M guards at the 8K mark. So Eric Reynolds is going to have zero ownership on this thing. So uh, slightly interesting because we know he has 35 to 40 fantasy point upside. I don't know. Like, I, it's really tough to get to him. Uh, Rashid Fleming, I do have a lot of interest in. He's uh, he's 6,900 here coming off the, uh, the 19 spot. Maybe some people get scared of that. But been so good for this team. I mean, 34, 44, 30 in the three games prior to that. So, whereas Reynolds will have no ownership at 8K, Rashid Fleming, an option for people living in that strong mid-tier of guys that have 5X type ceilings. So, you have to figure he'll have, you know, some interest on this slate. Rashid Fleming at 6,900. Uh, you know, I'm going to have a lot of builds today. Uh, obviously, coming off of my uh, <laughs> my first place tie, I've got some bankroll to absolutely blow from Thursday night. So, uh, I'll be maxing probably that uh, that KOBC, that $30, uh, and then a bunch of other tournaments as well. So Rashid Filming, if I play in 30, 30 lineups, I mean, he'll find his way into a couple for sure. Len Greer, 6,600, probably crossing him off. I'm under more to look towards Cameron Brown at 6K. The, the minutes haven't been there for Greer, but for Cameron Brown, like, you know, he's also got four and a half to five X upside at this price point. Um, obviously, Reynolds and Fleming do a lot of the uh, – the, a lot of the heavy lifting, but the guy plays 37 to 40 minutes, like um, more of a cash style type play uh, for me. So I think really I'm prioritizing Rashid Fleming, uh, Jay, Xavier Brown, man. Like what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on Xavier Brown uh, on this team? His price point's pretty interesting as well. well yeah, as and we know the upside when you, especially when you're talking about mid tier builds, like the 30 to 40 point upside fantasy point upside is what you're looking for. Right. So, um, 21% usage rate, 21% shot rate, 13% rebound rate, 20% assist rate, 4% steal rate, 41% three-point percentage in conference. Like, and he's, the, the thing for me is if you're on the all cardio team, if you're playing 35 plus uh, a game right now, then you have interest or I am interested in you for my uh, DFS lineups especially when you have the upside that brown does so yeah i mean i, I think you definitely in the, in the mid-tier builds and 6700 for that upside is, is something that you could probably look at no matter where you are if you're if you're in the mid-tier if you're trying to fill in if you're going stars and scrubs and you just okay i can't i can't get any higher than this i've got to find somebody a little bit a little bit cheaper than brown is somebody that you've got to consider make sure if you're if you're watching us on twitter we see a bunch of you out there watching us on twitter get over to the gsm youtube page to get into the bracket challenge link for that signed caleb love jersey and make sure you hit that subscribe button while you're there let's get to vcu mike a nine-man rotation three guys getting 30 minutes so not just like that 
not standing out to you where like all the starters are playing 30 plus, but we know that there's, there's three guys that are going to get some serious run. Yeah. There's three guys that get some serious run. And then there's some interesting GPP options that don't get major run. Um, Max Shulga, obviously the uh, most expensive guy here, been the best player for him uh, outside of Zeb Jackson. They've been one, a one B all season. A uh, 7,100. Uh, I mean, if you're building, you know, a lot of lineups, you, you maybe take a shot at him, but Really, that 7,100, I wish he was kind of in that mid-six range, like we just talked about the St. Joe's guys. Now, we now we will say that, you know, St. Joe's ninth and <laughs> or 11th in defensive efficiency out of 15 teams in the A-10. So uh, they're giving it up, and you're getting a pace up. So while Shulga, you know, kind of been living in the high 20s, low 30s, maybe a little bit more upside here for him, uh, for sure, especially since he did he did play very well against them in that first game. So 7,100, he's definitely someone that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll flatten to maybe a lineup. Uh, Zeb Jackson, a little more upside, I feel like. Um, 7K, love the rates across the board. A guy that flashes 30 to, you know, 38, 40 fantasy point upside, especially in this pace up spot. So uh, Jackson going to have probably a little more exposure, which means Shulga's ownership will probably be dragged down uh, significantly. So you can probably get a low owned Shulga in there. Uh, Bearstow, not too interested in him at 6,100. Like he just, you know, came over from Utah State. Uh, I don't have a lot of a lot of interest in him just based on the fact that, you know, he one, he doesn't uh he doesn't take very many shots, at least recently. He's only taken 13 combined shots. Um, not a not a you know a major, major usage guy. I'd rather get to, to Jackson and Shulga on that. Um Brocken here saying he's too cheap. I, I don't know. Uh he's not gonna be owned. So I mean, if, if he's gonna play big minutes, you know, Shulga, Jackson and Bear still will play the big minutes here. I'm a little more intrigued by like someone like <clears throat> Uh, Joe Bamasili, like he's 6,200. Now he doesn't start. He comes in and he'll close games. He had the uh, he had the nice game against them last time. Look, it's 6,200, right? Like it's in that you know that mid tier 6K range that we want to get into. These it feels like most of these guys are secondary type plays on this VCU side, um, except for maybe like a Zeb Jackson for me. Uh, Jay, is there anybody else uh, worth mentioning here um, on this roster? They play a lot of guys, so it's kind of annoying. Yeah, Lawal, I think at 5,500, he had 32 fantasy points in 24 minutes against him last time. He's not going to play more than, you know, 20 to 24 minutes. So this is probably a GPP option only. But you like the 9% combined stock rate, 36% combined rebound rate. It's an, it's an interesting way to get into this game. At this price, you know, especially at this at 5.5 K kind of hoping you can get a guy that's that can get you five X at that. Um, it feels like one of these VCU guys is going to smash in this spot, a pace up and a poor defense. Yeah, I mean, is. you got to spin I mean, the wheel if you <laughs> figure out which one it's going to be. So somebody is. And like you were saying, Brock seems to think it's Bearsto. Um I, I like Jackson a lot. Yeah. But, you know, you're going to want to get into this game. It feels like, like somebody's going to smash somebody. One of these players is going to be on the optimal. I feel like, you know, yeah. like they're just, it's, it's spin the wheel, right? <laughs> exactly. wheel. Pick you one, but, but get you one of these VCU players. Thanks for hanging out with us. And we see a bunch of y'all uh, have hopped over to the, to YouTube from Twitter. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons, hit that link. Uh, give us uh, fill out that form so we can make sure that we uh, can get you into that bracket challenge once that is launched. Um, got to be subscribed to the channel and you got to fill out that form for us and we will get you in there so you can show off every, you know, you guys, you guys always are hopping into DMs telling us how much smarter than, than us you are anyway. You know, <laughs> J J Jason B specifically. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. We love it. We love it. Thanks for That's the out. only reason I kept maxing these tournaments so I could, could get a first place and just – so Jason B couldn't hold that over my head anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tubby hopping in there. Good morning, fellas. Good morning to you, Tubby. Appreciate seeing you in the live chat. Uh, make sure you do like Tubby did, like Brock and Mama Rocks have done. Get in that live chat. Drop the fire emojis in there. Do whatever you want to do. First time, long time. Thanks for the vine. Hit those buttons for your bros. Do your thing. As we move on to Mississippi State and Auburn here, seven-point spread here, as you can see, 145-point implied total. Uh, Auburn, 57th in tempo in the country throughout the year. We really, really like that. We know Auburn is a very, very good basketball 
team. So Pace up here for Mississippi State, but uh, Mississippi State won the first matchup between these two at home, and they played their type of game to do it, a 64-58 to slugfest, but then lost at Auburn 78-63 to in the second game. So that one was played much more to Auburn's liking, and Bulldogs really slowed it down at home and played their type of game. Uh, but here's the deal. Mississippi State had a big double-double in each one of those games, Smith in one and Matthews in the other. Uh, so something to consider here, one of those big, you know, a big-time DFS perspective, a big-time fantasy point total there. Overall, though, a potentially ugly game, Mike, from a DFS standpoint. Mississippi State has nine guys that, that check in, and uh, we do like the fact that four or five guys are playing 30 minutes. And, and this is a long time come. Finally, <laughs> we got guys on this team playing 30 minutes a night oh man you don't miss the days in mid-january when it's 10 <laughs> guys playing <laughs> basically Jeez. doing what what auburn does um <laughs> so man the minutes have come back to the starters here uh although every now and then we'll, we'll get tricked into a into a mid-20 spot kind of like to listen we'll start with josh Hubbard. he's 7400 uh, off the game against Tennessee, obviously these guys are rolling right now, like a very fun team to watch firmly into the tournament now as they came into the SEC tournament, a little little bit on the bubble there. Uh, but Hubbard at 7,400, always a guy that has 35, 40 fantasy point upside. Love his game. Uh, you know, he's going to be 8 to 9K next year. Uh, the price tag on him, obviously being the price king on this side, uh, feels like maybe some people are going to shy away from him because you do have the other four starters um, mm-hmm. as more appealing type options. So if I can get Josh Hubbard uh, for for you know for a lower number as far as ownership, then I definitely love that. Tolu Smith at seventy one hundred completely burned us the other day, um, and then didn't play well yesterday. Uh, so you know he's only combined for forty two fantasy points in the last two games, but we know he has forty fantasy point upside in a singular game. So at seventy one hundred. Large GPP type play for me is Tolu Smith. Um, we talked about, you know, the the double-double upside. He had a double-double against these guys. Cameron Matthews also had a double-double in one of the games against these guys. So it feels like one of these two guys in the tournament uh, really could pay you off. So Matthews sitting down here at a $800, uh, more than a haircut here, man, almost a $1,000 difference here. Matthews had the big game against Tennessee, 35 fantasy points. You know, a guy that doesn't take a ton of shots. Um, needs to make all of his attempts to really hit his ceiling. But a guy that just racks up stocks is kind of stock dependent and rebound dependent. So you love that he's already double doubled against these guys. So Tolu Smith and Cameron Matthews, I'll be mixing and matching, um, you know, quite a bit in some of my some of my lineups here. Uh, I'm not going to go too crazy with this because we know that this game could turn out to be you know <laughs> 58 to 60 again. So uh, maybe in 25 to 30 percent of my lineups, I will get at least one of those guys in there. Uh, and then Deshaun Davis, uh, 5400. You know the price is starting to starting to creep up on these uh, on what were the you know lower priced Mississippi State guys, but 5400 for Deshaun Davis. I mean he's playing a pile of minutes finally, so we absolutely love that. 30, 28, 33, 33. You know taking eight to ten shots a game. Um, really, when he gets up there, it's going to be his steals that are that are racking up. So he's a you know a nice stock guy uh, to consider here. But uh, yeah, I mean, fifty four hundred. If you're looking to play, you know, maybe a uh, an Obaseki with uh, Deshaun Davis. Uh, maybe he can get you some salary up into those you know mid seven k type guys. So uh, anybody else here uh, worth a note for you? A similar situation to Davis is uh, DJ Jeffries, fifty eight hundred. What you like is we've seen the back-to-back minutes in the 30s. Uh, but I don't know that we're going to just jump all over him here. I think it's probably a, somebody in your player pool, but more of a secondary option. Um, I don't know. Like, you his, rates aren't like, like his rates aren't great, but they're, you know, when you play that many minutes. like Yeah, and, and that's the thing is this, the, he racks up those counting stats – or he has, especially since he's played the playing 30 minutes, he's been right there at the on the cusp of a double double in the last three. So I, it's just, I don't know he's somebody I'm going to go to a ton, but he's definitely going to be somebody in the player pool. Auburn on this side, Mike, 10 man rotation, nobody playing 30 minutes. We hate that, especially a guy like if we knew that Katie Johnson, like Mama Rock says, in the live chat, if we knew Katie Johnson was going to play 
He hasn't he hasn't cracked that twenty minute mark. It's hard to trust it even at forty four hundred here. Did play eighteen minutes yesterday, but again, like, is he going to take seven shots today? Like, that's that's tough for me to 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 get to Katie Johnson, uh, Mike. Any any thoughts on Johnson? And then who else on the Auburn <laughs> Uh My thoughts: you can basically rewind the the eighty DFS shows that we did this year. <laughs> my <laughs> thoughts are: it's Janai Broom at eighty four hundred, and that's that's about it. Um, you know, Broom obviously. Uh, can, can we just get, like, can we just please get 33 minutes again like you did against Tennessee? Can we please get 35 minutes? Just please. I, I don't think we're going to do it. Um, you know, Pearl, especially in these tournament, the conference tournament types, we're, we're going to see it in the NCAA tournament. Um, so I hope he stays at this mid-8K range. He's probably going to play 32 minutes in maybe not the first-round matchup, but the second-round matchup for sure. So we'll see how that goes for us. Other than that, like sometimes I'll take shots on these guards. Um, you know, it's a split backcourt here between Trey Donaldson and Aiden Holloway. I'd rather maybe look at one of those guys. We're trying to get, I mean, that might be too cute to try to get to Edie. I did it yesterday. I played uh, Trey Donaldson. He had like 10 fantasy points. So <laughs> um, sometimes a 10 or a 12 will work if you if you smash a, a, a Zach Edie 60 burger and it gets you, you know, you hit your other mid-tier type plays. So. Uh, the guards are, I guess, okay. Uh, but really, man, like 10 man rotation, nobody's playing 30 minutes. Like, what are we doing here? Like, we, I mean, this is the reason why Albert's pretty good. No one's ever tired. No one's ever injured. <laughs> you go yeah. out there, you play your four minutes, your TV timeout, and then you sit for the next, till the next TV timeout, then you come back out and you play, you know. So, uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Uh, it, let's ask the chat, man. Are there any sleepers out here on this Auburn side? I mean, Katie Johnson, I just, oh, God, like, it's just, it's just so, if Katie Johnson was 3,500, I'd, <laughs> still be pissed yeah. off when he puts up nine fantasy points, but still. But it'd I be mean, easier to swallow that pill. Mike, yeah. Mike jumping in hey, there. Up, Mike? A lot of guys that if I knew they were going to play 30 minutes. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. man. Like, that's the, that's been the gimmick all year. It's like trying to figure out Arkansas. Like, except when you're Auburn and you win, it's more tolerable, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that, from that perspective, Arkansas just, it, they, it was, it, it felt like they couldn't figure out the puzzle. While they were doing it this year, and Auburn feels like a well oiled machine. Good on them. Shot dependent guards on Arkansas, man. Yeah, yeah. But uh, who do you like in the old uh, Auburn and Mississippi State game? Let us know in the live chat. Are you riding DJ Jeffries like Brock has been over the last? No, Tolu and Cameron Matthews. (laughs) Hey, we got a lot of options here. Let us know what you're doing in the live chat. Moving on up, man. We are up a cup. We are up subscribers already since the start of the show, all the way up to eight twenty-five. We appreciate that. On our way to eleven gazillion fulfillion subscribers, but maybe we can get to eight thirty before the end of the show. If you haven't hit those buttons yet for us, make sure you do so and find that link for the bracket challenge in the chat, and that will get you entered in to win a signed Caleb Love jersey. That is correct. Even though he broke our hearts the other night on the slate, at seven percent, at seven percent, when we were in prime position, doesn't mean that that jersey wouldn't be sweet to frame and hang up I, in your house. I like what uh, Forklift Jeremy said that uh, was it Forklift or who, who said it earlier in the chat saying that uh, they're gonna join. Oh, Ant the Kid. Yeah, Ant. Ant uh, he's, yeah. he's a dude guy. <laughs> yeah. So maybe if Ant the Kid wins, he can ship you uh, one of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or maybe we'll just have, if, if if Ant wins, we'll just take the second. And and Eric the Blue, our guy Eric the Blue, pushing buttons backstage right now. Uh, let me know that I was not eligible to win, even though he's my son's favorite player. <laughs> Caleb Love is. I'm not eligible to win Brock. the jersey. And Brock um, with a very that's, that's, strong take. Yeah, there. it's very strong. Neither, neither. Um, What's the word? What's the what's the phrase? I can neither endorse that or uh, <laughs> say that it's bad. Either way, though, Caleb Love, you know, he is at a great seventy seven hundred in the tournament, <laughs> which and he'll probably be in all of my lineups just to crush my hopes again. That's okay though. Make sure, con- yeah, I can neither confirm nor deny. That's that's it. That's the phrase I was looking for. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Can neither confirm nor deny that that is a good thing to say about Caleb Love. But nonetheless, we will move on now to Wisconsin and Purdue, a 150-point implied total here. Yes, this we're getting to Zach Eady now, and what is 10-6, right? 
something crazy again. At least he's not 11K. Oh, 10-7, excuse me. At least he's not 11K anymore. <laughs> But um, it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, might, might as well, might as well be with this value on this slate. Uh, a pace up here for Wisconsin, but then again, basically everything is. Purdue won both matchups uh, between these two teams. First one, seventy-five to sixty-nine, nice, and then the second one was seventy-eight to seventy. Purdue averaged twenty-one and a half points and thirteen and a half boards in these contests. Smith had thirty-eight and thirty-two and a half fantasy points for. Purdue and then for Wisconsin Wall pulled up 70 so no that would be a little bit different Wall put up 37 and a half and 45.75 fantasy points respectively in the matchups against Purdue we hit on this earlier Mike uh, Chucky Hepburn was available yesterday but only in an emergency and we found that out 15 minutes after lock so that was <laughs> convenient yeah my doubt best he, lineup <laughs> doubt he plays today but that probably means he'll play 35 minutes would be down to an eight man rotation. <laughs> if he was out and then three or four guys got sort of depending on the night, uh, Mike, uh, yeah, 30 minutes I mean, to run. And because of the way the tournaments are structured on DraftKings, like they, they try to do it to where they think the games can be played, but the game's going to overtime. These games last longer than what they think. So then lock mm-hmm. happens and the game doesn't start till fifth. it's just like the beginning of the season. And then you're stuck here with a guy that all of a sudden Chucky Hepburn, available in case of emergency so i mean i what do we do with that we're gonna have to follow this news again i would assume because that was the situation yesterday i would assume that he's out today Uh, he doesn't have a questionable tag or anything don't go to this uh pay attention to this please if you're (laughs) if you're out there jamming in lineups uh because it's 6100 i mean he's I mean, it's not that appealing, I guess. I mean, it was more appealing yesterday at 50, whatever, 58 or 5,900 against Northwestern. This matchup, obviously, a little bit tougher. But anyway, man, so that just a little bit of news on Chucky Hepper. It would open up some some interesting plays. We'll start with Tyler Wall. You just mentioned 37 and a half, 45.75. What is this? Like, yeah. what are we, what are, what are TKR and, and, and Gillis doing here where, where Tyler Wall is a guy that has been just frustrating for the last year and a half? Uh, who absolutely has 35 to 40 fans, obviously more in this type of matchup. Um, but coming off the 7 and a 12, like, Jeez. is he sneaky for tournaments because of the matchup? I mean, I will click the button one time on 30 lineups to uh, to maybe find out if that'll happen. So you guys out there in the chat, let us know. Is Tyler Wall someone that you're thinking maybe a contrarian-type tournament winner uh, because of his history against Purdue? Um, obviously, that's not the only thing we want to look at, though. Uh, but if Chucky Upburn's obviously out, a little more uses to soak up there. AJ Store at 6K, one of our core mid tier type plays. Like, if Hepburn's out again, he's going to play 35 minutes. He's going to chuck up a bunch of shots. It, I mean, it's fraternities only because this guy is just so volatile. I mean, he can win you a GPP um, or a KOB seat, or you will absolutely just like be so frustrated with his game for sure. So, uh, coming off the 42 spot, I had crawl against Northwestern. A lot of people put both him and store together. Obviously I didn't get the store because I didn't know about the <laughs> Hepburn situation. I tried to say hello to my family every, every now and then in March. Um, so I missed the, missed the Hepburn uh, deal there, but I think most people did at 15%, but store certainly, uh, in play here at six K, even though the matchup, uh, you know, it's tough, uh, against this Purdue squad here. Uh, Stephen Crawl is still too cheap for his talent at 5,900, but his matchup is uh, <laughs> is pretty tough. So I could see Stephen Crawl getting into uh, him and Wall. It, it could be some foul trouble here. Nolan Winter uh, could become a decent value play if, if you're trying to play game theory where Stephen Crawl gets into foul trouble and you're just getting you know some Nolan Winter minutes. Uh, I don't know that we need to do that, but Crawl, if he's able to stay on the court, feels like he has some – some decent upside at this price point. I just worry about his ability to stay on the court. And then John Blackwell just playing so awesome. Like he's going to, he's such a stud already. And next year, I mean, the ball's going to be in his hands a lot more. He's going to be fantastic. Now he's coming off the 14 before that, a 26 and a 25 uh, with Hepburn in the, in the lineup here. So uh, John Blackwell, someone that you can definitely uh, look at outside of that, man. Like it's just kind of a crap shoot with this Wisconsin side. I think I'm maybe a little more interested on the Purdue side, Jay, any takes from this Wisconsin side? Brock saying he can't wait for full-time Blackwell for his Badgers next year. Yeah, I I would love that. Would love to see yeah. that run on a consistent basis. He's not going to be a. We're not going to be able to get him <laughs> hundred, you no. know. But <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that'll be. He'll be somebody that will definitely be 
talking about uh, a lot next year for sure. Max Klesmet, I guess, on this side, Mike, 5K. <laughs> uh, no oh, need boy. to worry. My accountant handles that. Another cheapy on a slate without a lot of cheapies here. He's going to play 35 minutes, Mike. You got to consider him, and he's flash 5X upside here. He got 26 yesterday. And 27 <laughs> five games. Yes, I, 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 you might have to. Uh, you might have yeah. to. A cheapy on a slate with no cheapies, my guy. Got to consider Klesmet. 35 minutes, 11 shots? Oof. Yeah. Oh, hey, geez. Just, this is so bad. Just get on the just get on the floor. Hey, listen, we're going to drop a poll right now. Tyler Wall is very intriguing on this one. If you like Mama Rocks, Mama Rocks saying no wall, he's turned the lineups <laughs> all year. Yeah, okay? absolutely. So so <laughs> not against Purdue. How, <laughs> no, but now I know how Mama Rocks is gonna vote in this poll. So make sure if you're watching Anywhere else but YouTube, you get over to YouTube, you hit those like and subscribe buttons, and you hop in this poll for us. Let us know what you're going to do with Tyler Wall, if you're in or out on him for this one. Make sure you get over there and you type in. All you got to do, get to YouTube and type in the search bar, Green Screens Media. Make sure you have that S on screens, Green Screens Media, and we will pop right up there. Push those buttons, get in, and get into the chat. Find the link for that uh, bracket challenge that we're doing so you can win that signed Caleb Love jersey. We got the DraftKings um, one and done invitational coming up today. So make a little $3 one. The link's in the live chat for that too. Make sure you get into all those things and the live chat as well. Tubby saying he just left work officially on a vacation for 16 glorious days getting pumped for King of the Bracket and some big contests. Love it. One and done. Going to eat. That's right. Appreciate that, Tubby. Appreciate the love. Appreciate you hopping in the live chat. And the kid saying wall is hurt. Yeah, I know you had a knee, a knee, but I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't, we don't have any like concrete information on, on Tyler wall. Uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll search that down, but obviously another, another situation where you're going to have to <laughs> just absolutely look for, for any and every type of news. Um, he played 24 minutes, obviously, uh, I didn't catch most of that game, but uh, if he's out, then obviously we're not going to Tyler Wall, but we don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll just have to see, um, which means no one's going to own him if he is playing. <laughs> he's not owned anyway if he is playing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brock saying he hasn't seen that. I haven't seen that either. So, I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe if he has some, hey, that's inside of him. I mean, that would be great if it was like a 30% guy that, uh, <laughs> yeah, that but, but maybe, some. maybe Ant's just, maybe Ant's just working off of like him. Now, something's up. Something's going on, like he's not right. Maybe he's just. Oh saying, no, Mike's he money fix. <laughs> well, let's say Clemson and stored to the moon. Oh, oh, well, he said I meant like no, I'm not playing. It. Okay. Yeah, that's. that's I was like, I wait, Tyler meant. Wall's hurt. That's Jeez, what I. That. That's what I figured he meant. Like okay. he was just saying he's not playing him because he just feels like he's banged up and isn't playing his best. But uh, I get it, Ant. Like I get it, like, <laughs> not wanting to to mess with that when you look, especially when you look at the Clemson last few games store. with. Seven and twelve fantasy points there, so I mean, yeah, like that's this is one of the ones where get on and hopefully we have the info like before everything locks up. We got It'll never starting change, lineups out. never Maybe change, we'll, my friend. We'll, the we'll, hope and dreams of Jay Hunter yeah, getting CBB, <laughs> <laughs> getting CBB reporting on time. Early poll results, everybody split 50 50 right now on Tyler Wall, so make sure you keep hopping in there. Let's go to the Purdue side, eight man rotation. Three or four guys hitting 30 plus minutes and the Zach Eady experiment. What are we doing? <laughs> oh man. You know how I felt all year. And I've actually gone away from my fifth my my well okay, so <laughs> for half the year it was like once he hit eleven K, I didn't play him. And then eleven K he started going nuclear. And then his price started falling a little bit. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll jump on this train. Start getting on there when there is value. Now I am Trying to find a way to get to him when he's like 20% on slates now. Mm -hmm. Because if he's going to drop 55 to 60, and I can find that one sub 4647 guy to just give me 18 to 20 fantasy points, then it just makes everything else work. I mean, what are we doing here? 48 plus, 48 plus in the last five. He, I mean, just went off for, for 52 and a half against these guys. <laughs> If you can get to him, um, that is great. Like, obviously, a core type play in Stars and Scrubs builds. Um, I don't know, Jay. Like, that, I mean, it's always, it's always the, the question of the slate, right? And just if, you, if he does smash and you don't have him, you just hope that, like, the, a couple of, like, pop-up value guys that, you know, 
five to ten percent. And obviously, if we get a clear cut value play, then his ownership is going to go closer to thirty to forty, you know, four fifty percent. If we get just like that straight line value, um, I don't know, man. I might just uh, I might go try to go with the field again, be around twenty to twenty five percent. Braden Smith. I mean, I don't know what Purdue's doing. Uh, obviously, got injured yesterday. Um, and then came back into the game. He hurt his ankle the game before that, and then came back into the game. So I don't, I don't really know what's going on um, with this Braden Smith situation. Why they're run, like he is probably the key to <laughs> to their success in the uh, the big tournament. They're guaranteed a one spot. Like I don't know why. So I'm gonna pay attention to the news if he if he's in or out. Um, because if he's out, we can we can look at a couple of guys. Uh, you know, we won't speculate yet because we don't really have any information of whether or not he's going to play. Uh, maybe a Colvin, uh, someone like that, that we can maybe maybe a little more lawyer. But Brain Smith at seventy eight hundred. I mean, if he's in, he's a full go. Like you have to have interest in him. Like DraftKings so annoying when they do this. Like they they put him at this price tag that it's like we've seen him put up multiple forties, forty fives, and he's always a great like not a direct line pivot as far as position, but a direct line pivot to Zach Eady builds to get to Braden Smith. It's really hard to play both of those guys together. So Braden Smith, mm -hmm. we'll just have to pay attention to that. I'm a little leery. Uh, Fletcher lawyer always in play for me in tournaments. I know it's, it's absolutely ugly, but a guy that has 25 to 30 fantasy point upside shoots a lot of threes, very shot dependent, but been playing 30 minutes, 30 minutes plus recently. So I always have I uh, always have some love for Fletcher lawyer, even though I went every time I play him, he puts up a 10 or a 12 and it's on my best lineup. And then I'm like, why the hell did I play Fletcher Lawyer at 5,400? <laughs> but, you know, a guy that's in play at this type of price point and this type of uh, setting here, Mason Gill is also at the same price, but his price is almost to a point where I don't really feel too comfortable uh, playing it. I mean, he's got 20 to 25 fantasy point upside. He's been playing a little more minutes than TKR recently. Whew, man, let's produce side, man. feels like if you can unlock what happens on this side, Jay, like what are your thoughts on Edie and uh, are you touching Lance Jones at all? Is it a little bit more expensive than Lawyer and Gillis? I'll probably, I'll probably have a lot more Lawyer than Jones. I'm more interested in Lawyer in this spot. But, but Jones did play well against Wisconsin. He had that like just – he was white hot. Like like The Rock coming out on SmackDown last night, like that oh, white hot old school Hollywood the, theme. The white <laughs> oh man, this, I, they, so when good. they put all three of them in there, like it's so good, like it's so good. But that's what Jones was playing like uh, a month ago or so ago, and it's sort of come back down to earth a little bit. So you know what he's capable of. I think he's somebody maybe a contrarian mid tier option. Want to get a little different? Consider Jones. I like I like Lawyer a lot in this one, and yeah, I I do want to have some shares of Edie. I, I would love to. <laughs> um, but I need 55K like, on my salary to <laughs> feel comfortable. Right. About it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I am going to – I would rather have Edie today, I think, than not. But it's, it's going to be tough. So uh, let's get to these next couple of games here, roll through them as uh, as we do that. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you're watching somewhere besides YouTube, get to YouTube, take our poll, let us know what you're doing with Tyler Wall. Let us know if you're going to hop into the one and done bracket challenge for that signed Caleb Love jersey. That link is in the live chat. Make sure you get into the one and done invitational on DraftKings, $3 uh, to get in and hang out with us on DraftKings and show us what you got. That link is in the live chat. Make sure you do all of that stuff. Let's get to UAB in South Florida now, a 148-point implied total here. A couple of teams hovering around 150 in tempo in the country. The, la the last time they played, they did both clear 70 points. It was 75 to 71, and UAB got the dub in that one. Lindeborg had 23 and 15 for UAB, so you really like that. If you could, obviously could repeat that, but you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> and then, I mean, there's no getting around that. And then for the Bulls, Miguel and Youngblood both had 17 points. That sounds like a R and B collaboration right there, <laughs> Miguel and Youngblood. Uh, but they both had 17 in that first matchup. Oh, just made me you snort had, on. Uh. <laughs> in front of hundreds of people watching this live right now, live before lock, <laughs> got Mike to break there. UAB uh, nine man geez. rotation, um, but. Vasquez might be out, Mike, to drop it to eight. They're still playing three guys 30-plus minutes regardless. Yeah, we'll see about the Vasquez news. He got into a fight yesterday. I don't know. Just a weird situation. I don't think he's going to be out. So, I mean, maybe a nine-man rotation, but we'll see. we got to follow the news here. 
burned a lot of people yesterday. I think it was 40% yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have any of them because I decided to fade him. So that kind of worked out and cashed a few lineups for me. Uh, but it starts with Lindy Borg. I mean, 9,400. I mean, a great pivot off of, of uh, Edie because he has 50 fantasy point upside. Um, I mean, he just went for 23 and 15 against these guys. I don't know who's going to be able to guard him on the South Florida side. So you have that factor. I don't think, I mean, him and Needing not going to have ownership. So it's like, you know, you'd love to get to both guys, but <laughs> you absolutely can't. So, yeah, Yaxel Lindyborg, 9,400, absolutely in play. It's just how do you get to him? I mean, 43, 34, 50. You know, had that 24 spot that we kind of cross off there, and then a 46 in the last five. So, obviously, a guy with massive rates, you know, really good assist rate for a big man, can block shots. Obviously, a double double third every time he steps on the court. We have our cover boy, Eric Gaines, and now 7,900, and he's been going absolutely nuclear. The transfer from LSU a couple of years ago, you know, we loved playing him in that mid six range, has been in our cores a few times this, uh, this year. Now we're paying 8K for him. Uh, but we're getting the production out of him and Lindy Borg, so it's like, you know, it's hard to click the button, but when you click the button, you're absolutely getting a return on investment here. So Eric Gaines has to be in your player pool. Um, you can maybe sneak away with him uh, at lower ownership than what he's been at recently because of the price tag. I think a lot of people are going to be more invested in Vasquez and Coleman. So Vasquez is in. He's 5,700. Obviously uh, burnt everybody yesterday. We'll see if there's any type of suspension. I don't think there will be. Uh, coming off the three spot, so you can just throw that away in six minutes. Um, you know, if he's going to play 30 minutes or so here, he has 30 fantasy point upside, which is uh, which is obviously 5x. Um, you saw in the last game against a tough uh, SMU defense, he had 35 minutes. So if he's going to play 30 plus minutes and he's in, I have some slight interest, even though I faded him yesterday. Uh, the price tag up a couple hundred bucks, though. I might kind of stay in that same theme. The reason why I faded him, I had a little bit of Corey Coleman yesterday uh, playing lights out in the last three games, man, as entered the starting lineup here over JV and Davis. He's had 26, 30, 32 in the last three. So I think Coleman's definitely interesting um, as that, what are we always talking about, Jay, that 54, 55, $5,600 play right there, man. So I might get to him in a few lineups here. And then, uh, you know, if – Vasquez were to be out for, you know, the, the fighting incident or whatever. Like, you could look at Ephraim Johnson. You could also look at Daniel Ortiz. But outside of that, man, like, who would be your favorite play on this uh, UAB side? I think Coleman, probably because of the price range. And I, yeah. I, mean, I live a lot in the mid-tier. And, yeah. and I like I like the fact that he could get to that 5X pretty easily with with the way that he's – with the uh, amount of minutes he's playing, I should say. Uh, Lindeborg. If you if you put Edie in, because if you're playing Edie, you're probably going to put <laughs> work around that, right? And then if you all of a sudden you're looking at it, and it's a thirteen hundred dollar difference there mm. from Edie to Lindeborg. So, yeah, is the, especially if you get that thirty six game out of Edie, and then Lindeborg goes for forty plus. Lindeborg Ooh. goes for forty eight or something like that because it's very much within the realm of possibility. So, uh, one of those guys, I feel like it, it's almost like. Put one in and then try to build. Put the second one in and try to yeah. build, and then and then and then you'll be crying there. tears on the eighth person you're trying to put in. <laughs> yeah, exactly, or maybe sooner because you're going to realize how thin it is. But uh, hey, I, we just got news popped up uh, that Tyler Wall is actually uh, a game time decision hey, today. There we go, just, man. That just popped up, so we're going to be no monitoring that, obviously. There, so whether or not Ant the Kid spoke that into existence or oh, here we uh, go. Braden Smith do... also questionable against Wisconsin. Oh boy, we're gonna be able to get to Edie. And... Oh, God, things just... just got interesting. Yeah, I have to do that, but yeah, uh, definitely gonna have to pay attention to all this <laughs> stuff now. Keep keep it coming in the live chat, Tommy and Mama Rocks. You're both very, very kind, saying that if you won the jersey, you'd give it to my son. I don't, you know, it's very kind of you. Uh, Caleb Love <laughs> is my son's favorite player. Somehow, I, I don't know how it even happened, but that is that is my guy, my my son's favorite. My guy. son wants five thousand dollars. So if one of y'all wins the uh, the big jam today, will you send it to my son? <laughs> I'll take the jersey either way. Thank y'all for doing that. Thanks for saying that. Before we move on uh, to South Florida, Mama, uh, Mike's money picks, I should say, saying I think it's possible that Lendeboy ends up being a better fantasy points per dollar play than Edie. Absolutely, Mike. It's 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 100% possible, especially when you can get that haircut 
save yeah. thirteen hundred dollars and then fit a couple more cats in. You can still live in that Purdue game. You can still you can still get in Fletcher lawyer and and because that I'm not worried about the nine from yesterday. I'm thinking I'm thinking lawyers at least four X maybe five. Except when Smith is out and I jam in a cheap Miles Colvin and play Zach Eady and score eighty yeah. fantasy points on you. <laughs> yeah, well we'll see though if Eady, if Eady, if Eady only. If Edie only gets to 36 or 38, like we were saying before, like that doesn't help you at all. So trying to, we'll see, man, we're going to have to make sure you hang out. You're liking, or you're following us on Twitter as well. Uh, at Dr. William Cannon, at MC Allen 34, at Fantasy Nav, our guy at The Real Napier too, doing stuff behind the scenes and seeing, and getting on the socials. Nape C Hustle doing that too. But at One and Done CBB is the show page. Make sure you get over to Twitter and follow us there at get green screens on Twitter and TikTok as well. So you're getting all of our content that we're doing. Uh, let's hit the South Florida side here. Not a lot to talk about um, <laughs> at all, really from a DFS perspective, there are nine guys checking in and only a few guys playing a ton. Yeah. The, the three guys we can, we can look to here. I mean, Keishon Pryor, an, an absolute stud, man. 7,400, uh, 34, 48. We know he has 40 fantasy point upside. Uh, so, uh, you know, 7,400, like I think he's a, I think he's a pretty solid play on this slate. Um, now, Miguel and and, um, and Youngblood, <laughs> your R&B group there, actually had the uh, the, the better games uh, against these guys last time. So but each born 17 real life points. So Shelton, uh, Shelton Miguel transferred from Kansas state uh, a few years ago, uh, definitely chucks up a lot of shots. <laughs> it's a very shot dependent type player. Every now and then he'll do a little something, but most of the time he's only going to collect a few boards and a few assists uh, really high steal rate though. So you like that for the stock. Um, if he's going to play 30 plus minutes, um, obviously he's been doing that pretty, pretty regularly. Obviously the ECU game was an absolute blowout. So I have some interest in that if you're building mid-tier in, in Sultan Miguel. Chris Youngblood had him yesterday burnt to crisp on us. Um, was that 6K? Now he's 6,400. I would rather get to Pryor or Miguel, but you get the you get the savings with Youngblood. Um, you know, came over from from Kennesaw State with Abdur Rahim. Um, it should have beat Xavier last year, but that's another show. Uh, man, I don't know. Like, I know he flashed the 40. You know he's on the court a ton. You know he takes a lot of shots. He's got a high assist rate. Like he can get you a steal or two. He's in the player pool. I mean, averaging 15 points per game on the year and scored 17 against these guys last time. He scored 17 or 18 real life points again. I think he's live uh, for four or five assists and a couple of steals. Which then, you know, you're you're reaching back and getting close to that five x range. So he's in the player pool for sure. I just think that I would rather get to Pryor and Miguel. Uh, but obviously, we always like to get to the more expensive guys because they've been producing, right, Jay? Sure. Yeah, it's, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, who would you rather like? The guy that scores more fantasy points <laughs> on a regular basis is who I would like. Yeah. Uh, Young Blood is definitely intriguing, though. And I don't think a lot of people are going to be on him because of the last couple of games out. People are going to be scared away from him. So I think it's an interesting play to consider, especially when we're trying to get a little bit different. And he's right in the middle of that mid tier. So I, I think with the upside, he does have to be in, in the player pool for sure. We just got noticed that Chucky Hepburn is officially listed as questionable. <laughs> if he had passed, it sounds like so at least they gave him the injury designation uh with a little bit of notice yeah. this time questionable listed as questionable iffy? what is iffy like <laughs> it's the, if he plays he's probably not you know I, just, I think is what it means i don't know but uh it, it just is pushing me even farther away from even considering him now since they're they're actually giving him the tag ahead of time now. It'll probably yeah. be a very similar situation yeah. to, to yesterday, I would imagine. So keep that live chat going. If you've got any questions for us, make sure you drop them in there. We would love to hear from you. If you haven't hit those buttons yet, those old like and subscribe buttons over on YouTube, do that for us. Up to 825 subscribers. We really appreciate y'all uh, doing that for us, doing your part in the green screens media universe mama rocks in the live chat if smith is out you have to think Edie smashes well i mean either way <laughs> yeah I, I i think he could go off either way right i, so, I think i'm with you it makes lawyer more appealing it makes jones more appealing it makes some of these i don't even want to say ethan morton's name but i mean i think uh i really name. think because i mean the kid got some run yesterday miles colvin the freshman like i, I don't i mean maybe it's getting too cute so Pride I'm a rock saying prize. <laughs> what happened to that? But, all right. <laughs>
Good stuff. Let's move on now. Let's keep it rolling here. The Bonnies, St. Bonaventure and Duquesne, 137 point implied total here. Uh, both of these teams play yeah. at, a, at a snail's pace. 246th and tempo in the country for Duquesne, 288th for the Bonnies. Um, who won both matchups, swept it against Duquesne this year. That first one, though, is what's kind of keeping me away a little bit. 54 to 50. <laughs> was the total in this first match 104 <laughs> points? Got a little bit better in the second one, 75 to 69. For uh, St. Bonaventure, Pride had two of his better games with 35 and a half and then 26 fantasy points, respectively. And then when you only score 119 points in, in two matchups against the team, there's really not a lot to feel super excited <laughs> about at all. The Bonnies play eight guys, Mike, and four guys play in 30 plus, and the pricing here, supreme. Yeah, I mean, you don't have anybody over 6,600. Charles Pride, who of, uh, you know, famous lore from Bryant, scoring 40, 40 fantasy points a game back then. Not the same Charles Pride we're seeing, uh, we're seeing with the Bonnies here. Uh, it's been an ugly season, but yeah, I mean, he's played well against these guys, 35 and a 26. Oh, it's like the Tyler wall of the, uh, <laughs> mid majors here. So, uh, man, some guys cheaper that are a little more intriguing, even though I know he's played well against these guys, Mike Adams woods, the Cincinnati transfer 5,900 pretty appealing in, in the kind of a lower mid tier type range, right? Like has 30 fantasy point upside, uh, plays a absolute pile of minutes has a you know a decent assist rate here it can poke out a few steals for you so Mike Adams Woods I, I feel like probably the I don't want to say priority play but like if you're in this game like I think that you probably want to look at him uh, I always hate saying this guy's name Asa Asamvu is fifty seven hundred nice. yeah thank you uh, <laughs> not all that <laughs> not all that interested in this guy man. Uh, I know uh, there's a guy that we talked about in the preseason, just like Charles Pride, that's kind of fallen back down to earth, man. What, what is your take on Daryl Banks at 5,700? Yeah, he hasn't been great overall this year. But what we do know is Banks' upside is through the roof. All-conference player type of upside last year. He showed that last year. If you're not taking shots on him in, like, large fields and qualies, then – you're not trying to win, okay? Like you <laughs> might as well just 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 uh, send me your cash and, and move along because and your jersey the, and and your jersey when you win <laughs> it because uh, Banks is that guy that can win this late for you. Fifty seven hundred. He put up thirty six last time out. Uh, thirty four and thirty eight four and five games ago. Do you see the downside though in the game? <laughs> yeah. ball Right. Yikes. Like, so um, big time yikes. And that's the up and down. That's why you can get him for 5,700 right now, but you've got to play him. He's got to be, it can't be 104 team. point total. <laughs> it's got to be no. closer to that second total. No, but I, I think banks has to be mixed in like regularly into your lineup just for this upside alone. And, and at this price when there's, it's really hard to find this upside in this, uh, in this price range on this slate. So Banks has to be a guy that we consider. Duquesne, though, on the other side. Um, oh, boy. Just yeah, 11 guys, really? Like, this is what we're seeing here. It's hard to pick up on anything. We, there, is a, there are some players that, we've, that we have played from Duquesne, yeah. uh, and that's because it's really the only three that are playing any minutes. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Clark's there. Day Day Grant's there. I mean – Clark, I mean, this is probably just not the spot. Like, it's a – I mean, the St. Bonaventure defense isn't great. Ninth in defensive efficiency in the conference. So, 8,100 is just really more about the price tag. Just takes a lot of the upside out. Day-Day Grant, 7,200, a, a guy that we know has 30 to 35 upside. I just don't think that we need to go here, man. Um, so, Clark and Grant, more cross-offs for me. I'm going to be looking at then a guy that we put in our tournament core, obviously, before we have all this, like, injury news breaking here. Uh, Jake D. Michelle, he's 4,900. It doesn't feel great when you click the number. But he's played 32 minutes in the last couple of games here. Um, he's not going to do much outside of, uh, you know, take some threes. So it's it's pretty scary here. But all cardio guy at 4,900, mm -hmm. if he's going to play 32 minutes, I mean, if we if we don't, you know, if Braden Smith and, and um, 
and Chucky Hepburn are, are definitely going to be out. Tyler Wall's out. And I think we can safely go to the Wisconsin cheapies uh, over this. And we can probably go to uh, someone like, uh, I mean, who are we looking at here? Like Miles Colvin or a Camden Heidi, um, who I think someone threw him in the a tubby through here in the chat for Purdue um, with the Braden Smith injury. So, yeah, man, I don't know. I don't think we need to get too cute in this game. I like your call on maybe some banks upside. I like the pride upside just because we know these guys have flashed 35 upside. But, uh, it's, yes, that is – I was absolutely about to say that. Uh, Mark, right on – man, just perfect. Deep rotations. But, actually, they'll get a couple of guys into the 30s, which is nice for fantasy purposes. But they're too expensive. And then Dean Michelle is just – they're just – oh, man. Yeah, it's Duquesne. Just lovely. Duquesne is is happy to be the Auburn of anything, to be honest. So, uh, but yeah, that's 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 true. They played about five guys trying to guard their homes. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's the deal. I think you just hammer the Demichel value here, but otherwise, because of the rotation and just, I, I can't get anywhere else on Duquesne. Yeah. So if 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 you need that value. I was I was about to say if you need that sub five k value and it's yeah, which maybe maybe value. turning into secondary value. We'll see how the slate shakes out with yeah. injuries. Literally a hundred dollars under five k, and that's what we're talking about because it's just so hard to find. Well, it might not be as hard with these injuries that are rolling in. So make sure you stay yeah. locked in uh, to Twitter and to uh, what we're doing here on the old two, one and done. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Make sure that you hit those like, like and subscribe buttons. Make sure that you get into that uh, bracket challenge. The links in the live chat to win that signed Caleb Love jersey. Get in the poll. What are you doing for Tyler Wall today? Now that we know. He's, he's already questionable. So are you, are you, if he's, if he's in, are you spoken playing? into existence? Dude. <laughs> yeah, sure. No kidding. No kidding. Spoke that right into existence. And the kid and with the in, almanac. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And get into that one and done invitational on DraftKings. That's in the live chat as well. Let's hit Texas A&M and Florida. Here's we've got three games left on this slate. Only game this year went way under. Aggies won at home, 67 to 66 in that one. Pullen had 18 and 8 assists for the Gators. And then Radford had 26, 5 and 2 for the old fighting Texas AM Aggies, <laughs> who play eight to nine guys, uh, and four are getting 30 plus minutes. Yeah, I think, man, the priority team on the slate, which I, I, I mean, look at our shirts, right? We, uh, <laughs> we're going to get burned. Wade Taylor, 7,700. Tyrese Radford, 7,600. Like, core-type pieces. I know we put uh, Taylor in it, but Radford could easily be in it, saving 100 bucks here. Both have 40-plus fantasy upside uh, in this matchup. We know the tempo's there, right? They're going to get paced up. Florida's only seventh in defensive efficiency in the SEC, so not stoppers by any means. Usually, you can take advantage of Florida inside. Uh, but I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at this, uh, this, this guard tandem here and probably playing – I'll be splitting a 50 50 on every single lineup here. Uh, Solo Washington at 6K, flashing 5X upside. You absolutely love it here. I think he's live for a double double here. Um, we've seen what guys like Grant Nelson, um, <laughs> pretty much, I mean, Russell <laughs> Shaywa put up, you know, a massive game against these guys. So definitely live are the forwards in this spot. Anderson Garcia as well, but you pay a little bit more for him. <laughs> Obaseki. 5,500, a prime, uh, mid, lower mid-tier type play, obviously a core type play for us. We'll see how the rest of the value shakes up with the injury news that continues to flow through. Uh, but putting up a 34 spot uh, last game, starting now, has put up a couple, a couple other games in those last five, uh, 28 plus. So any of a sec, you just a, a quality play. You're not going to you're not gonna find, you know, me telling you not to play any of these Aggie guys. They're just in such a prime spot here. So, uh, Taylor and Radford for sure. Uh, Solo Washington's price tag really nice, and Obaseki I think is going to be pretty popular, which is a little scary. Uh, at 5,500, it's definitely a solid play here. So we'll uh, looks like we lost Jay, but we'll get him back here in just a minute. Uh, Florida side, it's a nine-man rotation. Uh, they're starting uh, to to get a little annoying with this uh, third guard in their backcourt, but it starts with Pullen, starts with Clayton. I mean, these guys here are kind of in the same situation. They're 7,600, 7,500 as Taylor and Radford. So Pullen had the nice game, 18 points, eight assists against these guys. You know, guy that can flash for 35, maybe 40 fantasy points for sure. So uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm okay with Pullen. I'm not, you need something, maybe a secondary type play in this range. Walter Clayton, I'm um, going to garner a little more interest because he takes a ton of threes, plays a pile of minutes. 
Um, you know, I've been living into the 30s. I just don't know that I want to go to these guys, but I can go to the pace up side on the Texas AM side. Tyree Samuel, um, man, this is a, a an awesome, awesome system for him with Todd Golden. You know, we saw him playing with Seton Hall. Just never, never really flash major upside, but here he's flashed 40 a bunch of times here with Tyree Samuel. As we get Jay back here, uh, 70 fantasy points in the last two games combined. <clears throat> So it's the price tags on the Florida side that are a little scary. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Like I'm just more interested in the Texas A&M side. Is there anybody else on this uh, on this Florida side you're interested in? Uh, I mean, we've played the Richard the Kugel game all year, right? Um, Will I'm talking about Will the Thrill, of course. Uh, Sixty three hundred. He has thirty plus fantasy point upside when he's playing thirty minutes. He did play thirty minutes last game. But not this know, again. Man. Not like this. Not, not like, like this. You can't keep getting away with this. Kugel, does it feel like he's only going to play like 20? <laughs> feels <laughs> like it. Like it just feels like that type of thing. They flip flop all the time. So, yeah, it's a crapshoot here, but uh, good tourney option there uh, on that side for sure. Make sure if you're hanging out with us on uh, YouTube, you're hitting those buttons. Okay, Mike, what's Mike saying? I think pulling is a safe option for the Gators, but all yeah, the guys kind of yeah, yeah. It's so safe, but just not for not for not trying to win five grand or a KOVC. I just no. Like, give me give me some Radford and Solo Washington uh, over yeah. a, probably a popular Taylor and Obaseki for large fields. Make sure you're hanging out. If, or I should say, make sure if you're hanging out with this, you hit those buttons for us. If you're hanging out somewhere besides YouTube, get over to the YouTube channel. Just get to YouTube and type in Green Screens Media, and we'll pop up right there and come join us over on YouTube. Push all those links in the live chat. Get involved. Do your part in the Green Screens Media universe here. There's the Bracket Challenge link flashed up on your screen right there. The DraftKings tourney we're running today. Get in there. $3 entry to uh to hang out with us over on dk make sure you do that let's move on now two more games nebraska and illinois here a 158 point implied total thank goodness so good to see a big time <laughs> total here on this one um the team these two only have met one time in the regular season and it went to ot oh man would like that to happen again especially <laughs> especially yeah, <you> would. <laughs> 80, 87 to 84 between these two the first time out, everybody, it feels like that we'd like to talk about for Illinois, at least had a good game. Uh, 20 real life points for Hawkins. Damask had 19. Shannon had 18 for the Illini. And then for Nebraska, Tomanaga had 31. And then Rank Mask had Mask. He's going bonkers lately, too. 22. Uh. Yeah, definitely 22, 6 and 2 uh, when these two teams played illinois gets up and down a little bit nebraska does too but it's still a pace up for them let's start with the corn huskers mike eight man rotation and just a couple of guys hitting 30. i can't believe uh, i guess we're in an alternate universe right here where kase tomonaga is 7300. <laughs> you know how much i hate playing shot defending guys but when you when you shoot lights out um and you're hitting four and five threes and then you're actually falling over some rebounds and it's not five assists. Like that's not going to happen again. Um, <laughs> he's averaging over just over one on the year. Like what are we? What are we doing here? What are we doing? Um, I, I just I won't do this. I can't do this. My heart tells me I cannot do this on a shot dependent guy at seventy three hundred. Eric the Blue knows my rule. Once you get into the uh, you know the the mid six and the sixty five hundred and up range, like the shot dependent guys start to <laughs> start going no ownership um, for me, but. It's tough too because the three other guys are just cheaper. The, the main priority guys on here. So Bryce Williams at sixty eight hundred. Oh, dude, if he had one more assist yesterday in the second half, we just, his prop was two assists, and he didn't get there, and it would have been like seven hundred dollars had he gotten there for me on Prize Picks. So annoying. Uh, but Bryce Williams sixty eight hundred, coming off the thirty eight. We know he's flashed thirty plus multiple times this year. Rates across the board are awesome. Um, you love the you love the tempo of this game. Illinois basically said screw di- screw you know playing defense. We're just going to try to outscore you, and that's the type of game that you want to get into. So Bryce Williams at sixty eight hundred, uh, definitely in play. I know Tominaga scored thirty one against these guys last time, but I'm more interested in a uh, five hundred dollar price decrease with uh, with Williams of the two forwards, Gary and Mass Jay. Like 
I think I'm on mass because of the four hundred dollars savings, because his you know assist rate is nice. Um, the minutes, you know, are just it's not like the greatest thing in the world for him to to sometimes be laying in these mid twenties and and highest twenties minutes. Because if you were playing thirty five consistently, he obviously would not be sixty one hundred. He would be closer to eight thousand. Yeah. Uh, maybe I have a little love for him because he won me a GPP earlier in the year. Uh, but coming off a of back-to-back 27s for uh, for Rink Mast, um, we definitely – I mean, that price is just absolutely too cheap for Rink Mast. So he's uh, probably going to be popular. He was uh, yeah. popular yesterday. I don't know, man. W- what are your thoughts between Mast and Gary? Well, whereas Mast was very popular, Juan Gary was only 10% in the GPP last night, and I think that that's something to consider here. He's, nobody's going to play him again. I think everybody's going to go to Mast. I think Gary is definitely a way to get different. Yeah, Mast is cheaper, and uh, you've got the guards that have gone off recently on this team. But I think you need exposure to Gary. Like I, I just is nobody is going to go completely overlooked. I feel like so. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think you could go wrong. I think both of these players are going to have nice games. Who's going to have a better one? Ah, He's Mast definitely somebody I could see. I could see like being on the, the KOB winner, like he has 36 to 40 fantasy point upside in this right. type of game environment. Right. So. And, and, and again, are, are you trying to just, are you trying to win $5? Are you trying to win 5,000? And I think Gary is somebody to have to consider if you're trying to do that, you know, you're trying to go for it and you're trying to get a KOB seat. You're trying to just you know, be different and, and find a way to win. Gary is somebody that you have to consider playing as well, let's move on to the Illinois side. Eight-man rotation, big three playing 30-plus, Mike. And, again, we talked about some of these guys earlier. Like, these are the guys we like to talk about. They're the guys that are on the court all the time. Uh, but if you've been playing them at the – if you're playing a couple of these guys at their prices uh, in this conference tournament, they, they really haven't paid them off. Yeah, I mean, Shannon's gone off. Um, yeah. My- the damn price pick prop, uh, I didn't realize the game started, and I tried to go in and be like, oh, I want Shannon over 19 and a half. Of course, he goes for 28, and I missed the prop, but he's been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, 40 and a 36 DFS-wise in the last two, 36 plus and four of the last five. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll love that 5X, 5 to 6X uh, upside from a Terrence Shannon at 8,800. Uh, you know, if you don't get to the two forwards, uh, you know, Lindy Borg and Edie, I think Terrence Shannon is a fine way to uh, to get to, uh, you know, a guard, a high price guard that has five to six X type upside. Uh, Marcus Damask at 7,500 and Coleman Hawkins at 7,000. You know, they have been those guys that you're talking about. Uh, Damask 14 and 22 in the last two. Coleman Hawkins 22 and 22 in the last two. So, uh, I guess for me, man, like they're still going to play at just a pile of minutes. The mask hasn't shot the ball well. I mean, seven for his last 30. He's a guy that can get some rebounds, get some assists, doesn't do a lot of, his, of the stocks. So, but when he has those blow up games for 40, 45 fantasy points, is when he shoots, you know, 16 to 20 shots and he's knocking down over 50% of those shots. Uh, so Damas, someone that's interesting always for, for large field. Coleman Hawkins, always somebody that's interesting for large field. Mama Roxanne Coleman's due for a. Uh, ceiling type game absolutely so you know for me that each of these guys did their thing it was an overtime game but they basically all scored 20 real life points hawkins has more of a range to uh to hit this ceiling because he can get rebounds he can double double he can get you four or five assists he can uh get you some stocks whereas damask uh really needs to shoot the ball well um and pick up some of those peripherals to hit his ceiling and then shannon obviously a guy that uh you know not playing as much defense as he did at te- in the tech days but uh, a guy that can score 30 to 35 real life points on you. So all three of those guys live. I think Ty Rogers, Jay, kind of interesting guard forward eligible. He's 5,200. Like he played a pile of minutes last game. I know he's won some people, uh, you know, seats every now and then he will go off for a 30 fantasy point game. He just did that against uh, Oklahoma, or, um, Oklahoma state. I see that. I always see the OSU uh, Ohio state there from 32 minutes, but um, rebounding has to be there for him. And he's, Man, his rates for combined rebounding and assist rate pretty solid. He just doesn't take a lot of shots because Shannon and Damask and Hawkins take pretty much every shot for this yeah. team. So <laughs> Ty Rogers at fifty two hundred, kind of interesting as that, you know, that low five k range. Man, uh, yeah, boy has uh, played some minutes here recently. <laughs> the price is scary. Tell us about your boy down here in the in the five k range. 
Danger! Yeah, Jeremy asked about him earlier. How are we feeling oh, about him in 5K? Geez. Listen, like, we know when he's on the floor, he's a fantasy point per minute type of guy. The problem is, get on the floor! Yeah, we don't know when he's going to get on the floor. Okay, we don't know how long he'll be on the floor. Danger! He's basically been 4X through the last five, right? But, uh, I mean, because of the volatility here, the rotation volatility, uh, the minutes, the volatility in minutes, he's got to not. He's not 4K anymore. anymore. He's, he's 5K not 4K now. anymore. He's, he's 5K now. So a little bit tougher to get to him. But I'm glad that you, uh, you brought that up, Jeremy, uh, earlier because you know that's my boy, and I'll probably still mix him in just because I can't help myself. <laughs> I can't. I mean, lucky 29 yesterday, man. Come on. Like, that's 6X. Yeah. I mean, 20 minutes, bro. <laughs> and they'll probably, they'll probably go single digit fantasy points today. But, gosh, if you told me he was going to play 30, I would. Uh, he would be the lock of the day. <laughs> he would be 8,600 at that point. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say he wouldn't be 5K flat. For sure. How many more games do we have, Mike? Oh, look. We made we it to the end. We got one more. And it's uh, oh, talk about a very, very good basketball team here in Florida Atlantic taking on the Temple Owls. 147-point implied total here. FAU took care of business in their only matchup earlier this year, 80-68. to 68. Uh, Davis had 17-6-5 and five for the Owls. And Temple for Temple, Riley had 19-6. and six boards here uh pay some spot for temple let's start with them mike eight guys playing four guys playing 30 plus minutes yeah i mean i know this is a this is a pace that's for the defense hasn't you know hasn't been great as you, you know seventh in conference temple's even even worse so i think we like the florida atlantic side a little bit more but you like the pace up for temple you like that they play four guys 30 plus minutes um steve settle 6,600. Jordan Riley, you just mentioned, 19 point real life points in the first matchup. They're 6,500. They're in those mid tier. I don't know. These are secondary type mid tier plays. I don't think we need to get too cute, too fancy here. Uh, but Steve Settle and Jordan Riley have flashed 30 fantasy point upside. It's just, I don't really know that this is the, the spot to do this. Uh, the whole Temple side to me is just, it's just kind of ugly. Sam Hoffman sitting there at 5,200. Uh, the big boy loves to loves to shoot him some threes there at 5200. That's this may be a too cute uh, type play here. <laughs> it doesn't take many shots. When he does, he's just chucking threes. It's awesome to watch his form. A little bit of rebounding upside. The stocks can be there sometimes. Um, yeah, I'm with Mike here. But Charlotte beating Temple. Some guys that would have been great options today on that uh, Charlotte side. We're not going to get Deshaun Jackson and Il Il Ilicic and those guys, but. Uh, I don't know, Jay. Like this side feels pretty ugly. Uh, even though the pricing seems all right for some of these mid-tier guys, what about the guy way up at the top, man? Any interest in Heiser Miller? Heiser Miller at eighty-two hundred. Got to consider him in the GPPs. If for nothing else, I mean, he's their best player, and he's going to play thirty-eight <laughs> to forty minutes the whole the whole like, game. <laughs> I mean, he's going to be on the court, so it's got to be in your player pool. You, I mean. You got to consider Miller here because a guy that's going to play the entire game for somebody today is the best player and on the court. They're desperate. <laughs> and they ha yeah, exactly. So yeah. Uh, you like Miller's rates across the board. I think it's probably more of a contrarian turning option for Miller. But, but yeah, you got to consider him. He's 46 two games ago. Um, you see the ceiling. I could, I could go. I'll take 5X. Yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> anyone? Then yeah, it, it, yeah anyone. But uh, nothing else really on the Temple side. I mean, yeah, the you, you you said the pricing's right for the for the three guys you mentioned, but I don't know. It's it's just it's just kind of there. This is, where's the upside, right? Like, a, yeah, exactly. Score sixty eight points but, again. Like, yeah, that's not gonna cut the. It's not gonna cut the mustard. FAU. Let's get the Florida Atlantic, a real life basketball team. No doubt about it. They play a <laughs> bunch of guys, uh, but. Last time out, we're getting like we got the tease. Four guys hit thirty minutes. I'm ready to be uh, hurt. Can we? I, I mean, I'm I'm always ready to be <laughs> hurt, but it feels like extra hurt will be coming <laughs> from for FAU in this one. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan Davis, a core type play uh, yeah. as far as spinning up at this price tag, like the low AK range. 
Like you get off of Shannon, you get off of uh, Linda Borg in the nine, you get off of Edie. And then John L. Davis is just sitting here with 40 fantasy point upside. I know it's 8,300, not going to have any ownership. I mean, Temple is terrible defensively, and they also turn the ball over. So, like, he he has 40 to 45 upside in this game. He, this game needs to stay a little bit closer, though, uh, for that to happen. It's more of a cash type, uh, you know, play up here at 8,300. You know, Martin, you saved the – you saved the 900 bucks, but I kind of want the uh, the ceiling of a Davis. Um, so probably not going to get to Elijah Martin here. Even though a guy that has flashed 35 to 40 fantasy point upside. So we can't just cross him off like he's in the player pool. I think Golden, though, at 7,200. If Golden's going to play 30 minutes, mm. if he's going to play 30 minutes, he's played mm. 29 and 31. Say it now again. we're starting to see <laughs> if he's going to play, play 30, 30 minutes, minutes, he's going to double-double against these guys. He's going to rack up a bunch of stocks against these guys. He's got 40 to 45 fantasy point upside as long as he doesn't get into foul trouble. As long as the minutes are touching 30 or 29.5, I'm absolutely <laughs> in love with it. Uh, it's pretty exciting to see these Florida Atlantic guys. The other guy that touched 30, Jay, Brandon Witherspoon, man. Uh, any thoughts on him, man? I mean, played 30. Like, that's kind of intriguing. We haven't seen it very often from him, though, being on the floor for, for 30 minutes. Uh, it's, it's it's a rarity, but it's good to see at this point in the season that he's being trusted to play those important minutes. I think he's at 5,500. He's got to be in that lower mid-tier range for everybody. There's the, the value in a, in a slate where the value is at least coming in before we thought, you know, before we knew some of this injury stuff. Uh, the Tyler yeah. Wall, the Chucky Hepburn, the guys that are actually getting Braden into Smith, this question, yeah. well, Braden Smith, um, that we didn't really know setting this Which show makes up. these low 5K guys. <laughs> right. And exactly. So you could get a little bit different there. And it, and also it'll help get you to those 7K type of guys if you can play Weatherspoon. The, the, the deal is, is we know it, he's extremely shot dependent. So more of a GPP flyer. Shot I got away from say. that last game. Well, yeah, 15 and a half fantasy points last game, and he didn't make a shot. So imagine if he's playing 30 Minutes. and he's giving you those <laughs> counting stats, and he, you know, he hits three shots. <laughs> yeah. You know, like we're talking, we're in the mid 20s there. At, yeah. At, I mean, it could happen easily for Witherspoon if he just hits a couple of shots and he's playing 30 minutes. So Witherspoon is somebody to consider. Um, yeah, for sure. All right. Hey. Ran through all eight of these games. We're going to hit the reset button on a couple of stuff, on a couple of things here. We've got a lot going on today. Make sure if you're hanging out anywhere else, get over to YouTube before we close out right now. Hit that, get in the live chat. Find the links for the bracket challenge right there. You see it on the screen. All you got to do is fill out that form and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Those are the two things you have to do to be eligible to win the signed Caleb Love jersey. If you win the bracket challenge with one and done, you get a signed Caleb Love jersey. So make sure you get over there to YouTube if you're not. And if you're there and you haven't filled it out yet, what are you waiting on, ladies and gents? Make sure you do that. Make sure you get over to uh, DraftKings from this link that's on your screen right now and join our private one-and-done tournament. 30 players max, $3 to get in. Just hop in that chat – or sorry, excuse me, hop at that link and get over there. Um, what else we got going on? We got – Eight gamer this morning, Mike. Or actually, it's not this morning because we're used to that twelve, uh, t- that noon uh, tip. So we, but it's one o'clock, so we have an extra bit of time here to really try to fit Zach Eady into our lineups if we want to. Um, as we wrap up here, let's get back to the core fours. Now, obviously, these are players we usually do a cash build and a uh, tournament build in terms of core fours. We're taking a different approach at it today. Some of these players, obviously, now. There may be some more value plays as these injuries pop up. But on the surface, Mike, we have a mid-tier build that we want to give everybody for a core four and a stars and scrubs build. So go ahead and hit us with the mid-tier first. Yeah, it's on the mid-tier, and this is pre all this complete madness. So mid-tier might start to come down. We started the show. I mean, Brock even mentioned it. Like, you want to live in this mid-tier, right? Very strong. Still going to be strong because some, it's just because their value plays open. Doesn't always mean you need to yep. go to get to get to those. So Manny Obaseki, 5,500 for AM. Wade Taylor, 7,700 for AM. Get both of those guys in there. Uh, AJ Store at 6K, especially with this news that, uh, you know, Wall and Hepburn are questionable. Looks like Hepburn's probably going to be out. Wall, we'll see. 
Uh, Keishon Pryor at 7,400 for USF. I think you could fit some other guys in here. Uh, you know, some somebody like a somebody like a Golden you could throw in here. Uh, you know, say any of the Nebraska guys you can toss in here. So <clears throat> for mid tier builds, definitely like that. It's going to be 58 50 with that uh, mid tier type build on this uh, Stars and Shrubs build here. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Jake D. Michelle from Duquesne. This is pre, obviously, all these injuries. So we can look at maybe Heidi and Colvin from Purdue if Braden Smith's out. Uh, look at Ty Rogers at 5,200. Uh, obviously, Klesmet might be a better play from Wisconsin uh, if we get uh, Wall also out. Uh, John L. Davis, uh, love him at 8,300, kind of a contrarian type uh, tournament play and more of a cash type setting against a terrible Temple team. You can also look at gold and save a little bit more cash, good for cash and tournaments. And then, of course, uh, you got Zach Eady up there at 10 7, followed by Lindy Borg, and then also Terrence Shannon up there in that high tier range. So uh, we, had, we had a question earlier, man. Hopefully, made it to the show in a 90 minute show here. But uh, Anthony Taylor had asked about some FanDuel plays, Jay. Uh, you got any? I know on Fanduel the stocks are worth uh, like three points on each one. I've played over there in, in quite some time, so they're worth three three points instead of two points. So definitely, guys that can get uh, you know steals and blocks are going to be uh, a little bit more valuable over there. So, what are your thoughts on uh, some of yeah, those plays over there? Definitely, and we talked about Damask, uh, you know, playing Damask here on DraftKings, and he's somebody at sixty six hundred over on Fanduel that you got to consider. But when it comes to those stocks. Really making a difference. Tolu Smith at 6,700 and Solo Washington at 5,500. A couple of guys that can really rack up those stocks and give you a big boost there. So uh, those are a few guys to consider, Anthony. We really appreciate you hopping in. And if you did, stick around with us this whole time. Salute to you, good sir. We really appreciate that. Uh, we always appreciate all of the comments in the live chat. Elm Tree jumping in saying, great show. Uh, thanks for the information. Hopping in. Watching over on Twitter, it looks like. Thanks for doing that. And, uh, yeah, we got we, – we talked about price picks earlier and the kid jumping in there in the live chat asking uh, for some price picks. Anything sticking out to you, Mike, before we close out? Yeah, I think for me I, I um, got a couple of them in already. I think Lindy Borg, the over 14.5 points, um, even live for the, uh, the Demon, hit a nice little three-pick Demon yesterday, uh, which, was, which was pretty – always sweet. Um, Charles Pride, I like his regular prop. Uh, I think it's eight and a half, if I'm not mistaken, or nine and a half. And then his demon is only a point over that. So definitely like that. I think AJ Store, uh, if we get closer and closer, we know Wall and I mean he's already in line. If mm-hmm. <laughs> if uh, you know, obviously we get the Hepburn, he's gonna take a ton of shots. 15 and a half points. I definitely don't mind that. Um, you know, I'm obviously not gonna play anybody from from this Auburn side. Uh I think Zeb Jackson, 12 and a half points, is certainly interesting um, playing a St. Joe's team that doesn't play a lot of defense. Uh, he's going to take a lot of shots. Uh, you can also look at Rashir Fleming at 10 and a half points. I think he's live to go into double digits today pretty easily. Hopefully not the, the 10 double digit mark, but the 10 and a half over double digit marks. So we'd, we'd like 11 uh, and a half fantasy points from that perspective as well. Um yeah, just kind of kind of scrolling through here, man. Uh, I like the double double aspect that we talked about from Mississippi State. So when you look at Tolu Smith at eight and a half boards, um, you can also look at Cameron Matthews at seven boards. Both of those guys double doubled last time these teams played. It's gonna be kind of a maybe a, I mean, especially if it turns into a slugfest, there's gonna be a ton of rebounds for for one of these guys. So I'm thinking, uh, you know, getting some exposure to Matthews at seven, Tolu Smith at eight and a half for sure. Um, outside of that, man, I always like playing some of the fantasy score ones. They, they don't do as many as they used to. Uh, so you, you know, kind of be careful on that, but you're looking at Wade Taylor and Tyrese Radford at 32, 31 and a half and 32 and a half. I mean, Radford scored 26 real life points and, and Wade Taylor just went off yesterday. Uh, this is a pace up spot for the Aggies. So 31 and a half and 32 and a half on both of those guys, I think is pretty interesting on that. Um, and you know, as we get closer, maybe we'll drop uh, we'll drop some other prize pick plays that are out there. But I also think the uh, the Shulga assist uh, is also an interesting one. Where you take a look at all the assist rates here. I know it's demons at four and a half. Uh, probably probably stay away from uh, that one. I, I think his regular one was at. Uh, it looks like they might have taken it down. So it looks like his, his demon one's the only one that's up there right now. But if they put it back up and it's three and a half for the regular one. 
I, uh, I definitely like that. It's funny when Prize Picks sometimes only has demons for guys or goblins for guys. It's like, where's the regular line? Like, I just want to <laughs> play the regular line. Like, what are we doing here? Uh, but yeah, it's a huge day, man. Like, a bunch of we're gonna get. We only got one day left tomorrow, and we're gonna be bringing you tons of action. We got, you know, a uh, first look show that we're gonna do. We talk about one seeds and dangerous matchups, and I'm excited, man. There's a lot going on, so uh, looking forward to to everything for sure. One and done will be coming at you basically every day leading up until the big dance drops. Hashtag trademark. Don't don't sue me, NCAA, um, <laughs> for using the, the phrase there. The phrase that pays. You know what, Mike? This is a big time show for us. So many people out there watching. Uh, viewership through the roof. Interactions through the roof. We definitely appreciate that. Subscribers go, number going up. Playmaker 23 hopping in at the end there. It is bread time, baby. You know that's what we're here to do. Playmaker hopping in there along with Ant, Brock, Anthony Taylor, Mom, uh, Money Mike, Jeremy, Tubby, Tommy, Elm Tree, Mama Rocks. Everybody hopping in the live chat. Everybody hitting those buttons for us. Everybody that's hopping in to the uh, bracket challenge, make sure you hit that link uh, for your chance at a signed Caleb Love jersey also hit that link in the live chat for the DraftKings. Uh, uh the DraftKings one and done invitational we'll try to get that out on the socials as well for you so you yep. can click on those so make sure you follow us there at one and done cbb is the show page on twitter at get green screens on uh twitter and tiktok as well i am the conductor of the aforementioned green screens media train jay heinrich follow me on x at dr william cannon follow my guy the captain El Capitan himself, MC Holland 34 over there on X. At Fantasy Nav, our guy Eric, the blue, pushing buttons tonight, uh, today, this morning. Uh, it's just the days all run together. Days and wasted days and wasted nights. We're all running <laughs> it all together here, hanging out with you. Thanks for spending some time with us this morning. On your Saturday, you could be anywhere else in the world, but you were here with us, and we appreciate you. Now, Oh, there he is. What do you know? Right at the end as I'm about to sign off, he hops in. Oh, hi. Hey, guy. Good to see you there. Make sure you like all, hit those buttons for us. Follow us. Watch the injury info. And by the way, get this bread. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.